Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for taking the time to spend a little time with me. I always appreciate that. And again, give you the disclaimer, guys. I'm out of town at a hotel. I'm currently sitting in the bathroom to try to get some quiet. <laughs> you know, my son and my wife is in the other room, so you may hear some background noise, but it is what it is. But you guys don't wait. Y'all want to see content right away, so I got to do it. So here it is, guys. My second uh, episode two, I guess, for the blog series. Now that a lot of the blogs have come out. Well, not a lot, but you know, the ones that we really were looking for. Maybe some more will be coming. But here we are, man, the uh, Madden mechanics, so they're talking about target passing. Now, just I'm going to scroll through this a little bit, man, just to you know, scroll down and allow you guys to see it and read it, you know, in case you haven't done that already. But basically, you know, I'll just read a couple things here. You know, it says the control scheme is intuitive, providing a straightforward way for users to place the ball in the most advantageous place. The better players are at um, the better players are at utilizing the target passing mechanic. The more efficient and tactical they will become at picking apart coverages. The ability to visualize the placement of the ball exactly where you want it offers another level of user control. Now, you know that's pretty self-explanatory, and this is the thing that I've been campaigning for a long time. Y'all know I've been campaigning, you know, campaigning putting the ball where the ball needs to go. You know, in, in the back of the end zone, the back pylon. You know, you know, put it into a place where only a receiver can get it. You know, if it's close to the sideline, you know, can I throw it to him or throw it out of bounds and not have the risk of a defender always being in a position to pick it off? You know, in, in current Maddens, you know, that's that's pretty much an issue in some cases. You know, you can't really get the ball where you want it to go and then the animation's triggered and the defender's able to get to it and so forth. So y'all know how that works. All right, so let's take a look at a couple other things here, man. Just break it down how it works. You know, I'll allow you guys to take a look at it here. I've mentioned this before, but just so you guys have a better understanding of it, it is something that you can cut on and off. You know, I don't, I don't know why there's so many questions in regards to, hey, do I have to use this? And some people even think it is the only passing mechanic. Which again, I understand if you have questions, but I don't understand how you miss some of the details that's already out there available. It is not something that is automatically on. You have to turn it on by cutting, you know, clicking the L2 or the L uh, T based on the you know, gaming console that you're using. So basically, the bottom left button, L2, LT, what have you, activates the target passing. If you do not activate it, Guess what? It's normal passing. You just pass to the icon like you would in any other scenario. All right. And basically, you just want to look at it like this as well. This is typically a, you know, a, uh, a skill gap type of feature or utilizing this feature, you know, at certain times, certain examples uh, or situations rather. You know, like I said, back of the end zone, you're throwing a fade. Or maybe there's one on one coverage and you just want to lead your receiver way upfield or back shoulder it or what have you just trying to get it close to where it needs to go but still getting it away from the defender this allows you to do that it is a very tough thing to do you know it's very tough i've given you guys my thoughts on that from using it i actually like it in certain situations but you're gonna have to get used to it using it for slants and you know routes things like that you know slants and drags it's not as easy as you would think now the one thing that i did notice here you know, scrolling down, looking at this icon right here. Again, this was not there when I used this mechanic. It was not there months ago when I was down at EA, and it also was not there during EA play. Apparently, this indicator shows you where the receiver will end up. Now, me personally, just to give you my thoughts on that, um, I'm going to have to try it, but I don't necessarily like that visual aid. I don't. I liked it better when it was more of a skill gap where you had to decide where to put it and you know you had to be good at it. I think having this type of icon will make it a lot easier. So we'll have to see how that plays out but um, that's just how I feel about it. We'll have to see. Again, I don't want to make any rash decisions without you know utilizing it but me personally I don't feel like this is something that I want added to the target passing. I'd rather have it the way it was at first, where it was basically uh, just what it says down here. Let's get back to the instructions. You know, right here, you basically click it on, and then, you know, you have the cursor. You have to use the LS, the left stick, to move the target. There's your cursor, and then you hit the appropriate button. Boom. 
because that made it, you know, and to me, I, I think it made it way more difficult than if you know where the receiver's going, you know, but some people might think that is more realistic because, you know, in the real world, you know, quarterbacks do know where their receiver's going. So, again, I'm not going to make a rash, you know, determination on that until I'm able to play it with that mechanic, uh, that added piece, and, and we'll see how that goes, but... There you have it, guys, man. Of course, if you want to read this full blog, if you haven't already, just visit EA's site. I'll put the link in the description. And there you go. You know, just wanted to give you my quick thoughts on some of the blog information here. So look out for the next one, which will more than likely be the DB and Wideout Interactions. All right, so like always, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Cut on your notifications so you are aware of a new video. And I promise you, it will never hurt you to hit that like button. Alright guys, until next time, catch you in the next video. Peace.